A microphone is simply a device that converts sound waves into electrical energy. And sound is nothing more than changes in air pressure traveling out from its source in all directions. A microphone physically reacts to the fluctuations of that air pressure and then creates electricity proportional to the sound it captures. There are two ways that mics convert air pressure changes into electricity. They either generate the electricity or they regulate electricity sent to them. The type of mics that generate electricity are called dynamic mics. Mics that regulate electricity they receive from outside the mic are called condenser mics. Both have a diaphragm. Both require mechanical movement of the diaphragm. But a dynamic mic works like a speaker wired in reverse. A stiff, usually plastic diaphragm is attached to a coil of wire surrounding a magnet. When air pressure moves the diaphragm, the physical movement generates electricity. Now you can imagine this process isn't very efficient. It would take about 5,000 singers singing into 5,000 microphones to generate the same voltage as a 9-volt battery. A condenser mic also uses the movement of a diaphragm, but the diaphragm is a very fine disc, usually made of metal, suspended in an electrical field. This diaphragm merely regulates the electricity that's being sent to the microphone by phantom power from your mixer or by a battery. So if a condenser mic doesn't get power from somewhere, it doesn't work. Let me show you the guts of my favorite condenser mic. This is a Neumann U87. Here's the diaphragm, the metal part. Behind that is a metal grid. Now see that little wire there? There's electricity being sent through the wire and the metal grid, which creates a stored electrical field between the two of them. This effect is called capacitance. The mic becomes a variable capacitor when it's charged up by phantom power. And in the olden days, we called capacitors condensers which is why we call these mics condensers. Now, when a sound pushes on the diaphragm, it affects the distance between the diaphragm and the grid, which causes electricity to flow. It only takes a small movement to create a fairly large flow of electricity. This is why condenser mics are so much more sensitive to quiet sounds and the subtle, high-frequency nuances of sound. In the most basic terms, your voice or instrument is changing or regulating the electricity already there. Whereas a dynamic mic has to produce the electricity by the physical movement of the diaphragm to push an electrical coil that makes electricity. So the small movements in a dynamic don't create very much electricity like they would in a condenser mic. By the way, for you techies, an electret condenser, which most lavalier mics are, works a little bit differently using magnets to create the electrical field, but the principle is the same. Now, if condenser mics are so much better, why don't we just use those? Well, first, condensers are more expensive. It's hard to find a condenser mic that's any good for less than 200 bucks. To get a really good wired, handheld condenser vocal mic, it costs between three and $700. You can get an excellent dynamic vocal mic for under a hundred bucks. Also, condenser mics, because of their excellent high frequency response, are more prone to feedback. Condenser mics are also really delicate and can't stand up to the abuse that dynamic mics receive in my church. But most of all, to me anyway, dynamic mics sound right on a lot of voices and instruments over a PA system. In the studio, we use condenser mics a lot. But there, we have controlled acoustics in the room. We're not usually playing back over speakers in the room. We're recording, and we're typically recording a single instrument or voice in the room, or highly isolating the sounds from each other. And even in the studio, I still prefer the $75 Shure SM57 Dynamic on snare drums and guitar amps even though I've tried all kinds of condensers. In live sound, you typically only need condenser mics on drum overheads. But if you have the budget, condensers can be effective on acoustic instruments and your main vocals as well. I'm Greg Hill. 
for AV Genius.